Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Dive into C++14. C++14 was released in December 2014, and it is a small upgrade to the C++ language and standard library. Nowadays, both G++ and Clang are compliant with the C++14 standard, so I think it's time to move on and leave C++11 behind. Therefore, I'm starting this new YouTube video series that is completely dedicated to the C++14 standards, and it will follow the same format and topics as the previous series. So we will have chronologically sequential commented code segments, screencasting and live compilation execution of code segments, and the topics that we'll cover will be varied. We will have ga game development videos, videos about language features, interesting code snippets, best practice on the use of the language, and much more. In terms of compiler support, we can see that Clang, starting from version 3.5, has full C++14 support, and G++, starting from the recently released version 5.0, has full C++14 support as well. Previous versions of the compilers, such as Clang 3.4 or G++ 4.9, are also almost fully standard compliant, and they can be used during these videos. If you want more information about standard compliance of the compilers, you can check out the following links. So this first video is a brief introduction to some of my favorite new core language features of the C++14 standard. We'll cover function return type deduction, decal type auto, relaxed context restrictions, variable templates, and generic lambdas. This is a very easy and brief introduction. So if you are familiar with the features that I've listed here, you are free to skip to the next video in the series, which is more interesting and shows a more complex C++14 code snippet. The first feature we're going to talk about is function return type deduction. And this feature actually allows the use of the keyword auto in place of a function's return type. So it's similar to the auto keyword when we're declaring variables, and it basically removes the need of specifying explicitly the return type of functions. You can qualify the auto keyword with const, the pointer sign, or the reference sign, as you would do for variables, and it will automatically deduce the return type of, of the function from the return expression here. So for our function func0, we have a simple auto return type without any qualifier, and it's gonna return zero, which is an integer, and we can use static assert to make sure that the return type is deduced as int, as you can see here. We can do that by simply checking the decal type of the function call expression with the type int. And this will compile correctly because auto in this situation gets deduced as int. Another example here, we have a func1 function, again, with a non-qualified auto return type and we're just gonna create a std string in here and return it. And static assert here will make sure that the return type of func1 is a std string. As you can see, we do not have to specify any return type explicitly here. If this was C11, we could use trailing return type here. But th thankfully, C14 makes that completely redundant. If you're used to C11's auto variable type deduction, and you should be, you can see that this is pretty much the same. For example, here we can use the const qualifier and add a reference to the auto type deduction. And if we return this test std string, which is a static std string, we can static assert that the return type of the function will be actually deduced as const std string. Ref. This is a very useful feature, both because it saves a lot of type redundancy when declaring and defining functions, and also because it can make life a lot easier when dealing with complex template code. Here's an example of some container wrapper here, which wraps a uh, std vector of const t star. And if we were using C++03, we would have to specify the whole return type here by getting the iterator alias from the std vector class itself. In C11, we can actually use auto with the trailing return type using decal type of std begin of vec, which is more generic and probably also easier to read than the 
version above. In C++14, we can simply say auto, and it's much easier to read, and the type will be correctly deduced if we, in the future, decide to change the type of the container stored inside the class. Another example of the usefulness of this feature is when we have complex return expressions, such as this one. In C++11, we would have to repeat the expression inside the decal type in the trailing return type, which can be very redundant and long in case of complex functions. While in C++14, we can just say auto and the compiler will automatically deduce the correct return type for the complex expression. Moving on to the next code segment, we'll take a look at another very useful feature, which is decal type auto. And basically, if you use auto, you will always get a non-reference type deduced. You actually have to qualify the auto yourself with the reference ampersand here to get reference type. And if you use auto ref ref, you will actually get a reference type all the time for any deduction. Well, there are situations where you want to get the reference or non-reference type of a certain expression depending on the nature of the expression and the value category. For example, in this case, we're just using normal auto here as a return type um, deduction. And we're instantiating a static STD string called test. We are making a reference to test called result and we're returning it. In this case, auto will always deduce a non-reference type even if we are returning a reference. So we can static assert that the return type of the function is actually a normal std string, no reference. Sometimes we actually want references to be returned as such, so we can make use of decal type auto instead of a simple auto here, so that it will automatically deduce the type as a reference if it is actually a reference. In this return expression, we're returning result, which is a reference to an std string, and decal type auto will make sure that we get an std string ref as a deduced return type. We might also want to return our values references. So in this case, if we try to return std move of test from a function, decal type auto will correctly deduce the type as std string ref ref, which is an R value reference. This is a very unrealistic example because you never want to std move things out of a function because this actually returns a reference to a local object in this case, which is not right. You should rely on the compiler's return value optimization instead. So I've attended this year's C++ Now conference and it was a fantastic experience. And one of the talks there is called Type Deduction in C++14. And I strongly suggest you to Check out the slides if you want to know more about the subject as it goes really in depth with type deduction and covers a lot of edge cases and interesting cases. You can find all slides from the conference in the following GitHub repository. Moving on to the next code segment, we'll take a look at relaxed context restrictions. Basically, this language feature allows context function to have multiple instructions and common language constructs such as branches or loops. For example, this is a function computing some kind of number and it is a context for function. And inside the body of the function, we're using a for loop here, a branch here, and we're actually declaring a variable here. And this is valid C++14. This function can be executed at compile time. To make sure that actually happens, we can simply call the function in a context where we need a compile time value, such as a template parameter. As you can see here, we can call the function with an integer because it takes an integer parameter here. And this will compile and run because it is now allowed for the compiler to interpret C++ for loops and branches and many other language constructs. This is very useful as it allows programmers to write compile time functions in a familiar syntax. And also you can do a lot of cool things with the new context group. And there is another talk that I have attended at CPP Now 2015, which is context C++ at compile time, 
which is very, very interesting. It shows how to manipulate strings at compile time and how to manipulate containers at compile time. And all the slides can be found on the previous GitHub repository. In this code segment, we'll take a look at variable templates, which are basically variables that can be templatized. This is an example syntax here. We are just defining a variable called pi of type t, where t is actually a template parameter. And we can instantiate this variable here by specifying the template parameter like any other kind of template elements such as a class or a function. As you can see, we can say auto of pi int here and instantiate pi with int. And this variable will actually get deduced as an int. This one will get deduced as a float and this one as a double. This is very useful for mathematical constants such as pi because you do not require all the boilerplate struct around the value anymore. And you can use this very convenient syntax here. Variable templates can also be specialized for example, we may want to assign a unique integer to some specific types. So we declare a int variable template here that takes a type name template argument. And we use the specialization syntax here to actually define constexpert integers with a specific type and a specific value. So we're just saying that our type ID of int is actually zero or type ID of float is actually one, and our type ID of double is actually two. And we, make, we can make sure that this is correct by using static assert again, and this will compile and run. So if you wanted to do this in C++11, you would probably have to use a struct that wraps the value, and you would have to specialize the struct. As you can see, this syntax is way more convenient and natural. For the last code segment, we'll take a look at generic lambdas. Basically, what you can do now is declare the type of lambda function parameters as auto. And this will actually make the lambda behave like a functor with a templated operator parenthesis. So if I create a lambda here called L0 that doesn't capture anything and takes a X parameter of type auto, this is pretty much the same as having a functor with a templated operator parenthesis that takes in an x of type t, where t is a template parameter. So I can call this lambda with anything here. For example, I'm gonna call L0 with one, which is an integer. And as we're returning the argument multiplied by two, the return type will actually be int in this case. If I call the lambda with a float number, such as 1.f, and check the return type of the lambda, it will actually be float because 1.f multiplied by two, which is an integer, will be deduced as float. And we can check that the same applies to doubles as well. This syntax also means that we can have variadic parameter packs as lambda parameters, as you can see here. L1 actually takes in a variadic amount of arguments in the excess pack. And we can use size of dot 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 to return the, the size of the argument pack. To show you what the compiler actually does when instantiating these lambdas, here's another example. We do have a lambda called L2 here that takes in two auto parameters, x and y, and returns x multiplied by y. And during compilation, it gets converted to something similar to this struct, which will have a compiler generated name. It will have a templated operator parenthesis taking in two parameters, x and y, both of a different template deduced type, t1 for x and t2 for y. It will be const as the lambda isn't mutable and it will actually deduce the type using auto and return x multiplied by y here. So this was a very, very short video on C++ standard features and they were just some of my favorites. There are many more core language features and a lot of library additions. So here are some helpful links to let you explore what the new standard has to offer. This is a link on the isocpp.org website, which is a frequently asked questions page about the C++14 language features. 
and also the Wikipedia page has a very nice synthesis of both core language and library features. And this is a very good article on drdobs.com, which basically tells you what you need to know about the C14 standard. So thank you very much for watching this brief introduction to C14. In the next tutorial, we'll actually cover a very interesting code snippet that I call for args. And you can actually find the tutorial on my channel already, as I've released both the first and second episodes of diving to C14 simultaneously. You can always take a look at the full source code on my GitHub page here in the tutorials repository. And this is my website if you want to get in touch with me and check out my projects. Thank you again.